Okay, let me start. Today we are going to talk about the unsupervised visual apprentice learning. So uh, this is lecture 13. Please note that in this semester we have the uh, lecture until lecture uh, 13. Okay, so before starting, let's recap our our previous lecture, uh, lecture 12, right? So, yeah. In this lecture, we've talked about uh, the uh, sequence data processing by using the uh, recurrent neural network. So there are several kinds of ap application or the examples that use the sequential data like this, right? Uh, what was the neural net, uh, recurrent neural network? When you think about the uh, vanilla neural network or the uh, basic or the convolutional neural network, the each, it formulated something like this, right? From the input data or the input signal, we have the convolutional module or the neural, neural network module here, and then we can estimate the output per each, each input. Right, so this mod, uh, this vanilla neural network, uh, were formulated independently per each samples, right? But comparing to the this one, the recurrent neural network, uh, tried to use the uh the properties of the sequence of the data. So, for example, uh, there are several kinds of the recurrent neural network, um, uh, cases. The first one is the one. To one to too many case. So uh, in some application, we want to estimate the many output from the one single input. For example, image captioning, right? For another example, many to one case, uh, for example, the action prediction. So we want to find out the action class from the sequence of the video frame, something like this, right? Another example is the um, many to many case. So for example, visual captioning, uh, video captioning case, we want to generate the caption, which is the um, natural language formulated in the sequence data. And the input was the sequence of the video frames, right? So in this case, this is a many-to-many -many case. Another case is um, something like the video, uh, many-to-many -many case. So video classification case, we want to estimate the output yt per each input xt but the this uh, processing should be uh, related to the previous processes by using the recurrent module right so yeah here is the definition so recurrent module have the internal state that is updated at the sequential uh, sequence processes right so if we unpaired it unpaired it, uh, this recurrent module is is looks like something like this right so each recurrent, uh, each recurrent neural network gives the uh, hidden state to the another uh, after or the following RNN module, something like this, right? So the if we see the recurrent formula at every timestamp, it looks something like this. So HT is the new state, and HT minus one is the old state. So for example, here is in this case. HT minus one, HT, right? And XT is the input vector at some time step, some time step, in this case, T step, right? And we have the sum function with the parameter W, right? So, so the training the neural neural network means to find out the optimal parameter W here, right? So, so yeah, so, uh, please note that the same function and the same set of the parameter are used to every time step. So, for example, if you see the this RNN module, this RNN module have the shared network parameter, right? So, yeah. So specifically, the there are several kinds of the way to represent the, this term, this FW. But generally, we use the tangent. Uh, tangent with uh, WHH and WXH uh, um, do, uh, formulated something like this, right? So we can easily represent the YT from the HT, hidden state T, and WHY. So it means that we have the three kinds of the trainable parameter within the one RNN module, right? So WHH and WXH and WHY, right? So so yeah, so and then to train the this R R recurrent neural network similar to similar to the convolutional neural network, we have to formulate the computational graph, 
with uh, this RN module. So, so we can unpredict uh, this, this input and hidden state H, something like this, right? And then because we we have the same weight uh, weight matrix per each uh, per each dub F W here here here, so we can uh, we can formulate the uh, parameter update rule by using the this computation graph with the back propagation step, right? So there are several kinds of we can represent the several kinds of the possibility, something like the many to many case, many to one case, one to many case. Right. So, for example, if we, if we f want to formulate the sequence to sequence process, uh, we can we can merge the many to one case and one to many case something like this, right? And yeah, then how can we try in this one? We can use the computation graph and backpropagation step similar to the uh, convolution neural network. So training schemes that. Uh, similar, but as you can see here, if we train the RN module with uh, every possible sequence at one time, it would be very time consuming. So we need a more, uh, more clever way to deal with this one. So we use the truncated backpropagation through the time, right? So first of all, run forward and backward through the chunk of the sequence, not a, a whole sequence, the chunk of the sequence, and then. And then carry hidden state for in time forever, but only pro back propagate for the small, some smaller number of the step, something like this, right? And something like this, something like this. Okay. So yeah, there are several kinds of advantages and disadvantages of the recurrent neural network, something like this. But uh, main disadvantage was the its difficulty to access uh, information from the many steps back because the, there might be some um, gradient vanishing from the uh, long, uh, the previous, previous uh, state to the current state. So there is, there are, there is, uh, there is the formulation. So, okay, so first of all, we can formulate the gradient flow for, uh, of the RNN uh, module, something like this, right? And we can backpropagate the, uh, from backpropagation from the hidden state to the previous hidden state, right? So, so yeah. So when we use the several kinds of the recurrent neural network, there might be some uh, gradient vanish problem uh, from the this one. This is the um, this is the local gradient of the each RNN module. So because the this one is the less than one there might be some vanishing gradient. It means that the loss gradient from here cannot be backpropagated to the, this one properly. So we need a, a more, um, more robust way to deal with the, this vanishing gradient problem, right? So we need, we, we introduce the uh, long, long short-term memory called the RSTM module, right? So comparing to the RNN module, it has the several kinds of gate function, right? So in this case, the F gate, this F gate is whether to erase to cell, right? Cell is here. And IN, ING case, ING case is determined whether to write the cell, how much to write the cell, something like this, right? And in here, up gate, we uh, we use the up gate to determine how much the how much to leave it uh, leave itself. So to update the HT, we 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 want to use the this uh, current to cell state. But by using the this up gate, we can adjust the weight between the previous uh, previous cell, uh, current cell state and the and the current output from the HT minus one and XT. Right, so it can be formulated something like this, right? Because uh, when you see the this C, uh, CT case, there is no uh, other matrix multiplication, something like this one, this one, which make the bench gradient problem, right? So by using the this cell state, we can we can overcome the bench gradient problem, right? And yeah, we finally get the uninter uh, uninterrupted gradient flow, right? So yeah, 
Actually, there are another method for the sequence data, uh, sequence data processing, something like GLU or the memory network. So I, I strongly suggest you to read this paper, okay? And nowadays, there are new paradigm for reading over the sequence. Uh, actually, by uh, uh, instead of using the recurrent module or the um, LSTM module, uh, many state-of-the-art methods just use the uh, attention module called the transformer network. So here was the example. So, okay, so uh, similar to the previous one, we use the sequence uh, sequence module, something like this, but we didn't connect each other, but just use the attention module to uh, to aggregate the previous information, right? So this is the main idea of the transform module. So actually, the it was a very popular paper uh, published in the 2018 um, called, the, called the BERT paper. So BERT paper are based on the transformer published in the attention is all you need paper. So I, I also su uh, strongly suggest you to read these two kinds of paper because the, these two kinds of paper are uh, state of art in the um, natural language processing nowadays, even in the computer vision field. So I strongly suggest you to read this one and understand this one, okay? Yeah. Okay, so it, was the, uh, it is the end of the recurrent neural network. Today, we uh, we will talk about the unsupervised visual representation learning. Okay, so let me start. So before starting, I have the two notifications. The first one is the take home exam. So as we dis uh, as we as we discussed in the first lecture, we will have the final take home exam. So the date is the June uh, twenty two, from the two p.m. to midnight. So please reserve the two hour within this duration because the I will I will prepare the problem set um for um for the two hour exam. So please prepare a uh, please reserve your own time to take the this exam. And actually this is online exam, so you you can um, you can take the this exam in anywhere you want. So so Please just remember you don't you don't uh, you don't uh you don't need actually you don't need to any kind of the um, your notebook but you can just uh, uh you can just take uh, you can just see the your uh, our our PPT slide to take uh, your exam so please remember that and the scope will be the everything we discuss in this semester from lecture one to the lecture uh, 14, okay? So please, please start the study as soon as possible because uh, as you know, the from lecture one to the lecture 14 is really, really huge, right? So it might be very, uh, it might be impossible to study the everything in a one day, right? So please start to, please start to study this one as soon as possible. And then there is a final project presentation and report, right? Actually, as you know, in the midterm, we prepared the project proposal, right? So uh, some of you asked me some comment and we discussed something about something, something about the pro uh, final project, right? I, I strongly believe that you are uh, uh, you have the, some progress on your own project, so please submit your project slide and video, same as the same as our midterm presentation. And uh, in this case, please prepare the report. So, so yeah, they should be. This kind of thing should be submitted to the email by e by my email, right? And the due date of the, this one is uh, June 26, uh, midnight, okay? So I sent you email about this one, so please check again and uh, this kind of things, okay? So yeah, this, this is the notification. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the unsupervised visual representation learning. Okay, so if you started the uh, 
uh, deep neural network or the machine learning, you will frequently heard about heard the representation learning. Okay, so what is that? So what is the representation learning? Here is the here is the background. So the performance of the machine learning is heavily dependent dependent on the choice of the data representation or the features on which they are applied. So uh, for example, from the lecture one through the uh, recurrent neural network, we've discussed several kinds of the feature representation or the machine learning uh, network architecture, machine learning architecture, and the uh, loss function, right? Representation learning is the, just a general term to, uh, to represent the, these kinds of things. Okay, so representation, uh, representation learning is the learning representation of the data that make it easier to extract the useful information when building classifier or other product, uh, predictor. So let's think about this one. Okay, so let's think about the input sample, something like this. Um, let's say this is input samples. Uh, when you think about the, just one sample, let's think about the image case. Okay, it might be the XN, right? So this is the input case, and we use the some kinds of the machine learning module, or the convolutional neural network, or the recurrent neural network, and then by using the this module, we can get the representation, something like this. For example, if we use the convolutional neural network, it will be the uh, activation function, uh, not activation function, the convolution activation, right? So let's say activation, right? So if you remember the convolutional neural network, there are several kinds of the block or the tensor that represent the input signal using the some kinds of the convolutional module or the uh, max pooling module, right? So. This is the general case of the convolution activation, right? And then we use the, some kinds of the loss to train the, this module, right? Then representation learning is about the, this architecture of the, this uh, f function. For example, if we just a linear, uh, uh, linear regression, this is just like the uh, just like the dot product, right? But if we think about the more uh, complicating case, for example, the uh, convolution neural network, it might be more complicated with the XN as input, right? So let's say this is a CNN, right? So the, uh, the representation learning first is about uh, uh, architecture, and another thing is that about training scheme or the training things such as the loss or the um, um, optimization, something like this, right? So this kind of the thing is the representation learning, okay? So, so there are, and then there was the uh, two kinds of the uh, learning case, right? The first one is supervised learning, and second one is the uh, unsupervised learning, right? So you already know the, this kind of concept. So first of all, in the supervised learning, we think about the, there is the training samples with the label, right? So X is data, Y is label, right? What you want to do is to find out the mapping function, mapping function from, X to Y, right? It was, it was the supervised learning. There are several kinds of examples, right? Linear regression things, logic regression, classification, SVM, something like this, right? What about the unsupervised learning? So in this case, we only have the data X, just data with no label, and we want to learn some underlying hidden structure of the data, hidden structure of the data. So, for example, clustering, right? We discussed the uh, K-means clustering or the GMM module with the uh, uh, expectation and maximization algorithm, right? And uh, dimensionality reduction by using the PCA method, right? And the feature learning, density estimation, something like this, right? 
so yeah here is the today's uh today's goal so then what is the unsupervised representation learning so unsupervised representation learning actually we already discussed this one in the previous lectures but today we will focus on the deep learning method for the unsupervised representation learning so here is the idea okay there are so many kinds of the training set like this or the real data set so and then we can assume that this real data set follow the this data probability so it, it means that uh, each this each image follow uh, follow the this probability so but we 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 don't know the which part uh, which probability was used, but we can assume that there was uh, some probability that generated this real data, and and then there was a uh, one samples from the training data. Let's say the SM. Then what we want to do is to to find out this mapping function f by to generate the, this fn the uh, representation of the this xn by using the some kind of the task but in this case we don't have the any ground truth we don't have the any ground truth for the this training data set but we want to find out the um we want to find out the structure in the this training set so the question is how to find out the, this structure in the this hidden structure of the, this training data set. So yeah, this is today's goal, today's objective. So there are several kinds of ways the, the, but we can, we can, we can divide these kinds of thing as a two case. So generative module, generative model and discriminative model, right? So in generative model case, uh, we want, we want to train the, this F, representation from the input image or the input signal to this one we we don't know actually we don't have the any uh, any label but by using the uh, generator we can generate the image right so by using the this kind of thing we can train the this one without any ground truth so this is the generative module we will discuss this one in the later but yeah this is the general idea so the examples of the generative module is the variation autoencoder or GAN, GAN, right? Actually, this one is uh, one of the most important concepts nowadays in the computer vision field. So we will discuss in this one the in the in the later later slide. And what about what is the discriminative module? We ha if we have the image and if we have the representation um, module F, then represent uh, the representation from the input image. Then by defining the free text, free text, not a label, but free text. And then by using the this free text as a pseudo label, pseudo label we can train the this one without any ground truth so this is the uh, discrim uh, discriminative model which we will discuss this one in the later so so there are separate kinds of pre-text based method in here nowadays in com many computer visual application the state of the art method used the, this pretext based method to train the, their network without any ground truth okay so we will discuss this one so okay let me start with the generative module so yeah what is the generative model given training set the uh, the, the goal is to generate the new samples from from same distribution okay so for example training data is something like this each follow the uh, this uh, uh, this probability the data probability Right? Then, actually, we don't know the exact uh, this property, so we want to model, we want to approximate the, this data property as a p model over x, like this. So, 
during tra during training or during learning, we find uh, we find out the this uh, p model, the property of the model, and by using the this property, we can generate the new samples similar uh, similar to the this training data set, right? So this is the this is the main idea of the generative module. So by using the by using the this one, we can we can we can understand the um, real training data. Uh, we can understand the distribution of the real training data by using the p model over x, right? So the goal of the generative model is to find out this one without uh, any ground truth. But only using the this training set, okay. So the objective is to learn the p model that approximated the real uh, real property p data, and then we we want to in some case we want to sample we want to sample new x from the p model x, okay. So this is the general idea of the uh, generative model. And generally, so this kind of thing can be formulated as a density estimation problem. Density estimation problem. So, okay. So let me draw something like this. So, okay. If we can represent the, this image as a feature vector, okay. As you know, this image, something like, okay, let me say, uh, 206 by two, uh, 256, something like this, then it is just like the kind of the vector. Um, okay, let's say F, right? Then if we can, we can, if we can represent this feature vector in the feature space, it will be something like this. Then the density estimation mean, we want to find out the, we want to find out the probability of the this x function, uh, this this image, on uh, on the this feature space, right? So you can be think about the density estimation problem, right? So there are two kinds of possibility. The first one is we can use the explicit density estimation. Which uh, that explicitly define and solve for the t model x, t model over x. So in this case, we use the explicitly uh, model the this probability. But in some case, it is it will be really hard to the model the this probability. So we need to the implicit uh, implicit density estimation run a module that can samples from the t model x without explicitly define it. So, so to summarize, so it will be the uh, VAE, uh, variation auto equal the case, it will be the uh, GAN case. So we today we will discuss two kinds of things, okay? So VAE case and GAN case, okay? So, then why we need the generative model? Actually, in some case, something like the really sample uh, for artwork or super resolution or the image colorization, the we want to generate the really sample by using the deep neural network, something like this one. So in this case, the we need the generative model to to learn the uh, real data distribution within the image, within the real image, right? So it is the first reason. The second is that is that uh, we want to learn the useful feature for the downstream tasks such as classification, right? So for example, so if we have the good representation here, that rather than generating the new sample by using the uh, one more classifier, we can solve the another task another task by using the this representation, right? Actually, it was the goal of the this representation learning. So, yeah, this is very useful. And 
By using the, this generative model, we can get the insight from the high dimensional data, something like something from the physics world or the medical image things. So, so by modeling the, this probability from the real data, we can understand the, the real data. Okay? Then, and then we can model the physical world for the simulation and planning in the robotics or the reinforced learning approaches, something like this. So, so yeah, there are several kinds of the reason we have to think about the generative model. Okay. So actually, this is the taxonomy of the generative model. Uh, generative model can be divided into the explicit density and implicit density. So implicit density in implicit density, we we do not we do not we do not explicitly model the 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 um the real data set we can just implicitly assume that there are some kinds of the probability but we didn't use the, any kinds of the uh, probability to generate the image or to generate the signal so for example can just send is the kind of the implicit data set implicit density in explicit density, we use the explicit density model, something like the mean and covariance, or the mean and variance, something like this. Then we we directly up the, uh, we directly find the probability from the input signal or the input data set, something like the uh, Philip network and variation auto equator and a uh, Boltzmann uh, Boltzmann machine, something like this. Actually. Covering these kinds of the everything is the very very uh, very very uh, difficult and it might be impossible to deal with uh, this every kind of thing within one semester. So today we will just talk about the GAN and variation autoencoder in a very high level case. Okay. So yeah. It was the taxonomy of the generative model before starting. I will summarize the, this kind of thing in Korean. So, 이제 오늘 저희가 수업 시간에 배울 내용은 사실 좀 매우 어려운 내용이 되겠습니다. 그래서 어 저희가 지금까지 배워왔던 내용들보다 사실 좀 어떻게 보면 가장 어려운 내용이라고 할수 있을 것 같은데요. 그럼에도 저희 제가 이 단원을 준비한 이유가 그러면 사실 매우 중요한 또다 내용들 중에 하나이기 때문에 제가 이걸 따로 챕터로 뺐습니다. 그래서 이게 이제 뭐에 관한 얘기냐면은 이제 저희가 뭐 딥러닝을 공부하고 머신러닝을 공부하다 보면은 이제 레퍼렌테이션 러닝이라는 단어를 매일 이제 많이 보게 될 거예요. 논문에서 보게 될 거고 아니면 무슨 뭐 세미나를 가서 듣게 된다든지 그럼 레퍼렌테이션 러닝이 무엇이냐에 대해서 먼저 정의를 내려 보면은 사실 저희가 배웠던 모든 게다 레퍼렌테이션 러닝이에요. 어떤 얘기냐면은 우리가 어떠한 머신 또는 딥 네트워크를 학습하기 위해서는 우리가 실제로 존재하는 트레이닝 샘플들이 있을 거고요. 그 실제로 존재하는 수많은 무한한 샘플 중에서 우리는 그 중에 서브셋 그 중에서 어떠한 서브셋만을 트레이닝 데이터로 가지고 있죠 그쵸? 그리고 그 트레이닝 서브셋을 가지고 우리는 그 중에 하나가 또 인풋 시그널 F, X, N을 생각했을 때 우리가 원하고자 하는 이 F 즉 우리가 원하고자 하는 머신 또는 이런 모듈은 이 리얼 트레이닝 샘플 리얼에 존재하는 수많은 트레이닝 샘플들을 우리가 이 스트럭처를 잘 인코딩을 할수 있도록 우리가 이 F를 설계를 해야 되는 거죠. 무슨 얘기냐면 비록 우리가 전체 데이터 중에서 서브셋만 가지고 있을지 모르지만 그 서브셋을 가지고 실제 모든 데이터들의 특성 또는 실제 모든 데이터들의 디스트리뷰션 또는 실제 모든 드리, 드리, 어, 데이터들 간의 어떤 시밀러리티들을 잘 인코딩할 수 있도록 F를 잘 설계하는 게 사실 우리의 최종적인 목적이겠죠. 머신 러닝의 목적이기도 하고 딥 러닝의 목적이기도 하고 그러면 이제 이 F를 어떻게 잘 설계를 하느냐가 이제 아키텍처에 관한 얘기인 거죠. 그래서 뭐 가장 간단한 리니어 리그레스 리니어 뭐 리그레션이나 로제스 리그레션에서는 그냥 간단하게 어, 다 프로젝트로 설계를 했으면 가장 간단한 W 하나의 파라미터로 가지고 뭐딥 러닝으로 오면서는 이제 이거를 뉴럴 렛 기반의 수많은 데이 파라미터들을 가지고 이제 이걸 복잡하게 설계를 하는 거죠. 그래서 이런 이런 논리니어티가 이런 실제 데이터들을 잘 인코딩을 할 거다라고 가정을 하는 거죠. 그래서 이제 어떠한 우리가 매핑 펑션 F를 만들었을 때 거기 나올 수 있는 이 Fn이라는 즉 어떤 중간 단 그러니까 클래스 우리가 어떤 테스크를 풀기 전에 중간 단에 어떠한 벡터 폼으로 나타내지는 데이터 
아까 이제 레퍼렌테이션이라고 볼 수가 있는 겁니다. 즉 무슨 얘기냐면 은 xn이라는 인풋 데이터도 사실은 실제로는 이게 어떤 피처 벡터로 표현이 되는 거죠. 예를 들어서 320바이 320의 영상이면 실제로 뭐 60만 60만 맞나요? 60만 디멘저널의 피처 벡터인데 이제 어쨌든 그 데이터는 이 실제 우리가 트레이닝 데이터에 존재하는 어떠한 그 피처 스트럭처 정보들을 잘 담고 있지 못한 거예요. 무슨 얘기냐면은 이 영상 자체는 우리가 그 어떤 이 다운스트림 태스크를 풀기 위해서 뭐 클래스케이션이나 뭐 다른 태스크들을 풀기 위해서 한 어떤 정보로 변환이 되지 않은 로우 형태인 거죠. 그래서 우리가 원하고 싶은 거는 어떤 애플을 통해서 리얼 데이터들을 잘 인코딩할 수 있는 애플을 통해서 이런 로우 데이터 XN을 앱 레퍼렌테이션 FN으로 잘 인코딩을 해보자 라는 게 이제 레퍼렌테이션 러닝의 어, 목표인 거고 그래서 이걸 위해서 어떻게 잘이 아키텍처를 설계할 거냐 그리고 이걸 어떻게 잘 트레이닝을 할 거냐 이 F를 하는 게 이제 전체 레퍼렌테이션 러닝의 이제 목표라고 할 수가 있겠습니다 그래서 이제 이런 레퍼렌테이션 러닝도 사실 똑같은 거죠 그래서 슈퍼바이즈 러닝과 언슈퍼바이즈 러닝이 있을 거고 이론적으로는 우리가 실제 존재하는 모든 데이터를 다 가지고 있고 그에 해당하는 정답을 모두 다 가지고 있을 때 정답이라고 하는 거는 우리가 풀고자 하는 문제 클래스피케이션인 같은 경우는 어떤 클래스 라이벨이 될 수도 있을 거고 뭐 무슨 테스트가 있을까요? 예를 들어서 뭐 머신 트랜스레이션이라고 봤을 때는 어 우리가 실제 한글로 된 센텐스와 영어로 된 센텐스의 모든 실제 가능한 모든 경우의 수의 페어를 다 가지고 있으면 사실 문제는 끝나는 거죠 그게 이제 슈퍼바이스 러닝으로 풀 수가 있는 거고 하지만 어쨌든 슈퍼바이스 러닝도 이 데이터와 라벨이 존재하긴 하지만 그게 어쨌든 실제 샘플들의 섭샘플이기 때문에 사실 한계들이 많이 있겠죠. 그리고 우리가 실제로 풀고자 하는 문제는 우리가 예상하는 것보다 우리가 어떤 실험실 환경에서 쓰는 데이터들보다 훨씬 더 훨씬 더이 트레이닝 라벨이 없는 경우가 많겠죠. 그리고 훨씬 더 우리가 생각하는 것보다 이 데이터의 디스트리뷰션이 복잡해집니다. 그렇기 때문에 사실 슈퍼바이즈 러닝보다는 우리가 기본적으로는 언슈바이즈 러닝이라고 생각하는 게더 맞겠죠. 무슨 얘기냐면 은 실제 데이터들은 있고 그거에 대한 디스트리뷰션, 그거에 대한 라벨은 절대 몰라요. 우리가 접근 자체도 할 수가 없어. 왜냐하면 너무 방대해지고 뭐 사실 우리가 이거에 대한 어떤 프라이어 알리지도 없는 상태에서 그럼 이제 이걸 어떻게 학습을 할 거냐 이, 이 레퍼런트 애플을 어떻게 잘 학습할 거냐 라는 게 이제 언슈바이즈 러닝의 목표가 되는 거고 그래서 이제 저희가 뭐 기본적으로 배웠던 뭐 클러스터링이나 디멘션 리덕션이나 뭐 댄스티 에스티메이션 같은 것도 하나의 이제 언슈바이드 러닝의 예시라고 볼 수가 있는데 이제 딥러닝 이 시대로 오면서 이제 언슈바이드 레퍼런트 러닝들이 이제 각광을 받기 시작합니다. 그래서 실제 이런 엄청 무거운 F 즉 컨볼루셔널 뉴런 넷이나 뉴런 네트워크를 학습하기 위해서 언슈바이드 레퍼런트 러닝을 어떻게 학습할까? 라는 얘기들이 이제 나오기 시작하였고 그래서 이제 가장 대표적인 방법이 이제 제너레이티브 모델 방법과 디스크렌트 모델 방법들이 이제는 소개가 되기 시작합니다. 그래서 디스 제너레이티브 모델이 무엇이냐부터 시작을 하면은 이런 거죠. 사실 실제 어떤 트레이닝 데이터를 만드는 거는 이 프로버티 즉 트레이닝 데이터를 만들기 위한 프로버티가 실제로 존재를 했고 그 프로버티를 따라서 데이터가 샘플이 됐, 샘플링이 어, 이 됐다고 저희가 가정을 할 수가 있겠죠. 그러면 그 실제 데이터를 만들기 위한 어떤 이 프로버빌리티 즉 실제 프로버빌리티를 우리가 잘 모델링 할수 있으면 그리고 그 프로버빌리티를 러닝을 할 수가 있으면 이 프로버빌리티를 가지고 우리가 제너레, 어, 데이터를 샘플링을 해낼 수도 있을 거고 그러니까 새로운 데이터를 만들어낼 수도 있을 거고 이 프로버빌리티를 가지고 우리가 다운스트림 태스크 즉이 프로버빌리티 가지고 우리가 지금까지 배웠던 다른 태스크들을 더잘풀 수가 있는 거죠 그냥 이런 로우 데이터를 썼던 것보다 이제 이게 이제, 이제 제너레이티브 모델의 목표가 되는 거고 그래서 제너레이티브 모델을 학습하는 건 이제 크게 두 가지 방법이 있는데 익스플레시트하게 모델 학습을 하는 거는 이 프로 이, 이 프로버티 모델이 어떤 모델을 따라간다 가정을 하는 거예요. 예를 들어서 자이 모델은 가우시안 분포를 따라가는데 분산이 뭐 분산과 어떤 평균과 분산을 가진 가우시안 분포를 따라갈 거야. 즉 그러니까 우리는 이 모델을 학습할 때이 분산과 이 평균 이 평균만 찾아주면 돼라고 푸는 게 이제는 익스플리시티 딘스티 모 에스티메이션 방법이고 임플리시티한 댄스티 에스티메이션 방법은 자이 트레인 데이터가 어떠한 프로버티를 따라서 만들어진 건 알겠어 근데 이 프로버티가 어떤 폼으로 나타나는지도 모르겠어 심지어 가우시안인지 아닌지도 모르겠어 
하지만 우리가 이 프로빌티가 있다고 가정을 하고 이 네트워크 자체에서 그냥 프로빌티 자체를 한번 학습을 해보자 이 프로빌티가 우리가 따로 설계를 안 해도 그냥 네트워크를 학습하다 보면 이 프로빌티를 이 네트워크가 알아서 학습하게 만들어 보자 라는 게 인플리시트한 방법이죠 그래서 가장 대표적인 방법이 이제 익스플리시트한 방법은 이제 VAE, 베리에이션 오토 인코더라고 하는 방법이 있고 인플리시트한 방법은 GAN, 제너레이티브 어드버스럴 네트워크라는 이제 방법이 있습니다. 그래서 이두 가지 방법을 오늘 시간에 배울 텐데 사실 이것도 정말 어려워요. 이두 가지를 오늘 한 시간에 또다 끝낸다는 건 사실 불가능에 가까웠고 뭐 이제는 여러분들이 이제는 시험을 준비하시면서 아마 오늘 챕터랑 다, 네, 다음 시간까지가 이제 마지막 시간일 텐데 어, 이번 수업 시간 거를 이제 공부를 하다 보면 은 어, 약간 좀 멘붕에 빠지시는 케이스가 많이 있을 거예요 왜냐하면 이게 어, 실제적으로 이걸 이제 완벽하게 이해하기 위해서는 이제 프로버티에 관한 내용들이나 어떠한 어, 실제 이제 여기를 구현하는 이제 어떤 이 수식들이 매우 복잡하기 때문에 이제 멘붕에 빠진 경우가 많은데 어 이제 그런 부분에 대해서 사실 크게 걱정을 하지 마시고 사실 우리가 이런 수식들을 다 애울 필요가 없고 제가 항상 수업 시간에 얘기하는 것처럼 우리가 이제 머신러닝을 공부하고 딥러닝을 공부하는 거는 외우는 과목이 아니에요 그쵸? 저희가 수학을 배우는 것도 똑같지만 이해를 하는 거지 이걸 외워서 어쨌든 우리가 뭐 이걸 이 수식을 잘 외워가지고 우리가 이제 어떤 문제를 풀때아이 수식을 난 애우고 있을까 이걸 가지고 풀겠다라고 하는 게 아니라 이해를 하는 면 되는 거죠. 무슨 얘기냐면 우리가 사실 중간 우리 기말고사도 보잖아요. 이제 기말고사도 보는 게 어쨌든 오픈북이거든요. 저희가 그렇기 때문에 우리가 이 내용들을 못 외웠다고 해서 풀지 없는 문제가 아니란 말이죠. 무슨 얘기냐면 그보다 더 중요한 거는 이게 무슨 의미를 가지는지를 외우는 게 사실 제일 중요한 거. 그리고 나서 이제 저희가 연구를 하고 다시 공부를 해 나갈 때는. 어 그런 내용들이 있었지 하고 거기 돌아가서 잘 다시 우리가 아 이런 거였구나 라고 다시 볼수 있는 자신만의 그 메터리얼들만 잘 가지고 있으면 사실 그거면 충분하다고 생각을 해요 그렇기 때문에 오늘 내용들도 매우 어려울 텐데 너무 이제 부담 갖지 마시고 사실 이걸 최대한 자기 것으로 학습을 할수 있도록 노력을 해주시기 바래요 그리고 이거를 수식을 전체가 이해를 못 하더라도 최소한 이 하이레벨은 아이 베리얼 오토니코가 뭐냐 GA인이 뭐냐 라고 누군가 물어봤을 때 예를 들어서 자기가 친구가 물어봤을 때 이걸 전혀 모르는 친구가 물어봤을 때 설명할 수 있는 수준 아 이제 베리에이션 오토닉 코드와 GA는 자 이런 이런 건데 이렇게 이렇게, 이렇게 어 우리가 사용되고 이런 어플리케이션도 사용되고 있어 라는 정도의 알려줄 수 있는 수준에서 여러분들이 이해를 한다면 오늘 한 시간에 그걸 이해만 한다면 저는 충분하다고 생각을 합니다 네좀 얘기가 길어졌는데 이제 다시 돌아가겠습니다 오케이 so let's move on Okay, so first of all, let's start with the variation autoencoder case. Okay, so to understand the variation autoencoder, we have to think about the autoencoder first. So autoencoder is the unsupervised uh, approach for learning the low dimensional feature representation from the unlabeled, unlabeled training data set, which is a similar problem statement in, in our today's lecture, right? So let's think about something like this. Okay, so there is the input data x, something like this. In this case, let's think about the image case. There are so many kinds of the input data, right? Then what you want to do is we want to find out the, this feature represented by z. So generally, the this z is smaller than the x. So in this case. The, this is the dimension, uh, dimensional reduction, reduction case. So we want this z function to capture the meaningful factors of the variation in data. So for example, okay, so there are several kinds of image here, but uh, so good feature implementation is to encode the, this um, uh, this property of each feature, for example, um, in this, for example, this image, it has the two legs, but in this case, it has the two of uh, heel, or in this case, it has the two uh, ears, something like this, right? So, something like this. In this Z case, in this representation, we want to extract the meaningful semantic meaning from the this input data set. So, so this is our goal. Then how can we do it? How can we, how can we train this one? This is the main idea. 
So, okay. So from the X, from the input signal, by using the encoder, we can represent the feature Z, right? Then if this feature Z has the good representation of the, this X, it should be used. It can be it can be used to generate or the reconstruct the input data itself, right? Right. In other words, if we have the uh, if we have the good decoder and good encoder, that by using the this reconstruct image or the reconstruct the input data, the distance between the original data x and the reconstruct data x hat should be same, right? In other words, by minimizing the distance between the original X and the reconstruct X hat by using the this autonom, we can train the this decoder and encoder network, right? So, so the auto so in the, in this case auto encoder means auto encoding means encoded. It means that the this architecture encode the input signal X itself, right? So this is the uh, cool, uh this is the way to train the autoencoder by using the this reconstruction term, right? So for example, generally the encoder and decoder deformate uh defined by defined by neural network or the convolutional neural network. So for example, okay, if we have the input data here. Then if we have the four layer component and the four layer up component, okay, you don't need to worry the this up component of component uh terminology, but this is just kind of the convolutional module, but it can be it can be generate the higher le higher resolution be, uh, than the previous level uh previous the small resolution, right? For example, in the convolution case. It generate the smaller. Uh, it generally generate the uh, smaller special resolution than the input input signal. But by using the up up uh, up neural network, we can do the reverse reverse thing. Okay. Anyway, so by using the this encoder and decoder, we can generate the data set, new data, something like this, right? So for example. This is the original image, so this is generated image. What we want to do, we want to make the same between this one and this one. So by using the this signal, we can train the this encoder and decoder, right? And then if we have the good encoder, something like this, so good feature representation, we can use the this feature representation to solve the uh, subsequent the task. Right. For example, something like the classification or the um, other task. Right. So rather than using the original input data, by using the this feature representation, we can understand the input feature representation more. Um, how to say? Um, more accurately. Accurately. Okay. So this is the general idea of, of the autoencoder, right? And but in this case, it will be actually this is the uh, this is the autoencoder. It was it was the it was it was developed in the, in the uh uh about the uh what's that. 1920 maybe yeah 1920 so so it was very long history but nowadays by using the deep neural network we want to formulate the, this autoencoder in a probabilistic way so this is called the variation autoencoder so variation autoencoder so here is the idea so as you can see here from the slide 12 uh, 13 14 and 15 16 it is related to the variational autoencoder, so it might be hard to understand this one in one time. So let's try to understand this one step by step with me. Okay, so before that, uh, let's take a break.